Um, now we are going to deal with the decision finding process in the Fediverse and how it can be improved. And Lena Simon is uh, she is of from Digital Courage, and she is going to talk to us about a council system in the Fediverse. Lena <coughs> is a technology philosopher and deals with how technology can be made better for the people and make life better. So please give an, a warm applause to Lena, and the stage is yours. Right. Thank you. I can't see anything. Ah, here is the projection. But I'm looking on my screen anyway. OK, a council system for the Fediverse. <clears throat> you may think of uh, real socialism, Soviet Union or something. That's not where I want to go. That's just a term I was throwing in to kind of make it a thought experiment and keep <clears throat> the experimental character in mind. Now, who of you is familiar with the Fediverse? Or should have asked the other way around. Who actually has no idea what the Fediverse is or what it does? OK, great. So just for the camera, hello. Um, I'll just briefly summarize the Fediverse is a new alternative for social media. And in particular, uh, what is interesting and special about it is that we operate it together. It is decentralized. You can choose your own servers. You can go where you feel comfortable and still reach everyone else. And if you don't feel comfortable anymore where you happen to be, you can actually move without losing your contacts. And that is something that we haven't had in any existing social media. Sometimes ask, people ask me why email never dies out. It's a, an ancient technology and still around. Well, it's because it has open interfaces. And exactly that is what the Fediverse has too. And that is why, why for me it is the future of social media. I would put it that way. And together with that come some problems, because we haven't quite got used to the idea of the network being in our, hand, our own hands again, that we can co-determine what happens, that we can shape it, that the moderators and those that uh, operate the pods are actually at our own level. And that means that some people don't really like it that much or haven't quite adjusted to it yet. And some people say, well, registering in the Fediverse has to become easier because it's so irritating to first have to find your own server. And I always reply, no, that is an advantage. You have to get used to the fact that you are making our own decisions. And this is good, but we are not used to it. And that is why we find it strange. So we have to use that responsibility that we are regaining and decide how it should be. The Fediverse isn't just a good social medium because it has open interfaces. Humans have bad characteristics, characteristics which they do take into their social media existence too. That doesn't change by having open interfaces or having free software. So the difference is that we are able to shape it ourselves and we can get involved in the decision making. Right. And then we have all kinds of questions. How do we actually make those decisions? What is the right way of dealing with spam, erotic content, jerks, Nazis? So we haven't quite got the full answers for that yet. And the nice thing is that this is our opportunity to, to find them and enter into a dialogue about this. That has been impossible in the past. It has been the Musks and Zuckerbergs who made the decisions, and we could only shrug our shoulders. So how do we actually make those decisions? So we could summarize or <clears throat> we could conclude that surveillance capitalism is coming even into the Fediverse. Facebook and Google and others are kind of extending feelers. And there is one large question already. Do we defederate these instances immediately? Or are we happy that we are gaining more contacts, which we couldn't reach in the past because we weren't at Instagram and all these awful things? But at the time that we 
embrace them, they will take us over. They will determine the course and the tone, and that will leave us standing and being determined by surveillance capitalism. And exactly that is what we don't want to happen. And we could imagine that we could have the cake and eat it too, and not let them determine things, not let them have the decision, and be quicker than Google and Facebook if we can get together and find our togetherness, which includes being tolerant against other opinions and other positions and people that have other, other needs. And we could then see how can we get together. And if we have a huge community and we want to say that this is the umbrella under which we can all find each other and want to come together, and then Facebook comes along and says, I don't want to keep to your rules. Then we can say, OK, now we don't want to deal with you, but these are the basics. Come on. You will be able to do that, actually. So the councillor, the, the, the democracy or the Soviet's democracy, hard to state the word Räte, uh, this is just an idea that I came up with because we have this decentralized structure and these systems um, had these small and ever increasing, well, let's put it, let's turn it around and ask you, who of you cannot really understand that term, uh, councillor system? Um, uh, it's a form of very direct democracy where you have very small committees. If you uh, build a pyramid or a tree diagram, you have the root on top normally, strangely enough, and then the very grassroots, the um, smallest units are the councils, the uh, uh, people that um, in the Thinking of those that invented democracy, we had the councils of the workers and of the soldiers. They, those found each other and elected delegates and told them which decision, decisions they should make. And these people then went one level further up. And in, on that level, again, delegates were chosen. And that how, that's how it went all the way up to the central office, which was the actual government, as it were. And we could do it in this way in the Fediverse too. But there are important weaknesses in this metaphor. And I will come to those weaknesses. We have large, huge differences. And <clears throat> that system has problems. I'm quite happy that this hasn't prevailed because there is no division of powers, for example. It's just useful as an inspiration. So just to compare the council system and the councils that I imagine in the Fediverse, first of all, in the council system, we have a system of government, a democratic state tool, which, of course, is not the case what we have. It's not what we have in the Fediverse. It's about a relationship between individuals. We're not a state, so that is the most important difference. You have to be clear about that. And then we had the delegates that were elected and went one f level further up. They, those had an imperative mandate, which meant they had to vote what they were elected to, to vote for, no matter what their own opinion was. We know this from our democracy. Here, the members of parliaments are only obliged to their own conscience. They can do what they consider right that the voters may not consider right. This is not possible here. Of course, these server operators have the ultimate right. There is no imperative mandate. Those that is those that are a guest on some server uh, has to have to stick to their service rules. Uh, and in the council system, there were not any fixed elective periods. This was a permanent uh, structure, and, and delegates could be exchanged at any time. In the Fediverse, if I were to say, OK, my instance is my smallest unit, my council, and I'll elect my representatives, uh, and I would then unelect them by switching to a different place where I like the people and the situation more. 
So that is the way to kind of unelect someone, switch. And instead of workers and soldiers council, we have instances as the smallest unit in the Fediverse. And the division of powers, I've been talking about that already, uh, separation of powers, that is actually true because the admins that operate the service ultimately are those that decide about moderation rules. And if I talk about the judicative, well, actually, I'm kind of bending that example very much. We're not talking about a state, so we don't really have to talk about separation of powers. So let's assume that the idea with the council system is a Friday versus a good idea. So let's get started. So that we get to one of the first problems that we know from the history. How do you introduce a council system? Somehow not so really. It worked once somewhat, but not so really. But when it was tried out in Germany, it only lasted a few days and then it failed. Why? Because you had to build it up from the ground up, but that doesn't work in the direct democracy. There's a logical problematic. I thought about the Euro European Union later. There we, they came together, and how they did it, it worked, and that's how we would have to do it. From, from down up, not from up down. That means server groups instances would have to be combined in two groups from down to upwards from bottom up. Here's the councils again, the lowest level, like the workers and soldiers would be the instances. The next hierarchy would be the, the server communities, the high, highest council, central council. Here is it very important that there could be multiple. For example, through social, the social network of Trump uses basically also Fediverse technology, but I'm not sure if that's what we want to have. We are not sure if we want to have high councils that are not going in a first the higher council. use that as an opportunity to have a sip. What's here above all, that's a protocol. If we use a common protocol together, there are decisions made, and everyone that agrees on that protocol have decided for it. And we will not get out of it if Nazis decide for the same protocol, but we don't have to collaborate. The one way is server communities from bottom up. Start by having server co groups. If then we want to reach the highest council, then we would need a basic set. The smallest common denominator that we can at least agree on. Everything that's opinion out, what is left, if we focus on what needs to be there 
to enable communication. If we start to define a framework not discriminating so that we can allow different opinion in a certain spectrum, then there's a chance that many will agree. And as far as we go down the hierarchy, the rules can become stricter. In the individual communities, they can be stricter. But the highest council needs to be flexible so that as many people as possible identify with it. The question is, what is the minimum requirement? Subsidiarity. The decision to keep so low as possible in the hierarchy, so low as possible, but not any lower than that, that's where the decision needs to be made. If there's something that has to go higher up, then it has to go higher up. But we want to influence into the instances. We have d different requirements, different opinions, different reasons. We disagree in many re Some people want the Fediverse to be a living room to be comfortable. They don't want to be confronted with stuff that they're uncomfortable with. Other people say they are journalists. They, I want to even see the Nazis. I want to see what's happening in the world. I want unfiltered, unchanged information about, about everything. Not that it's influencing me. What's that? It's music here. This different needs. I have the picture of Eric Kessner in front of me. The, the animals meet each other for in a high rise building. This is nice phrasing. Everyone finds a room in the high rise of the animals that suits everyone's needs. And all animals can gather in that room with their needs and requirements and can have a conference and exchange. And that's what the Fediverse is for me, or that's what I want the Fediverse to be. That it's possible to have on one side the people who want to want it to be that comfortable, to want to be comfortable, but also having the people I want to see everything. I also want to see what's going on with Trump. So what's our smallest common denominator? How do we get all the animals in one high rise? And uh, there was a camp that I attended a short time ago, the Fedi camp. Well, the numbers were quite different, a few zeros less. But we collected a few ideas there. If we were to come up with a kind of charter for the Fediverse, we could, we could name it differently. But what would have to be in that charter? What would the basics be? And one item was very frequent, the one thing that was always mentioned, and that is transparency which is kind of natural, of course, to want. So a network has to lay open which rules, uh, which criteria it uses to make decisions and how moderating happens, what is moderated, what is expected. Also, how much time 
as if the server is to be closed, how much time people will be given to move? Is it a server operated by volunteers where there is a certain risk that it would close down quickly? Or is it run by an organization or even by a uh, is it even a capitalist uh, run service, which is not a bad thing in itself? And um, if I am, if I'll stick to this image of the council system, and if I was to decide which council would I join, in the other example, if I was a worker, I would of course join the workers' council, but here I can choose because I have my delegates, as it were. Uh, as those representing the instance. And the only way to make that choice of instance of that council um, possible is to be open about the conditions there. And then there are a few other basics which you don't really have to line, uh, outline, but let's do it anyway. So current law has to be adhered to. You can save a lot of things by saying we'll stick to the valid laws, which of course has to be adhered to. Then human rights, of course, non-negotiable. And the dignity of the human is something we added. And anti-fascism, I think that is quite simply, well, because it's impossible to stay neutral in fascism, it's impossible to be neither for or against it. And because it's just a non-thing to be in favor of fascism, anti-fascism is the safe um, kind of guideline. And of course, you have to have a certain protection of minorities because we do want to protect diversity, of course. That's what the this structure is about in order to not have them be overrun by the masses, because people at mass can be quite, quite terrible, even if they're intelligent and quite <clears throat> uh, empathetic. But as a large group, you can have quite bad characteristic characteristics, which is why you have to have protection of minorities as a stated goal. And also, an important point, although it seems very small, if we say now we are coming together and I, we are going to support each other, this function for moving the openness of the interface, the option to switch server without uh, losing your contacts and be punished that way, without being punished that way, that has to exist. If Facebook wants to play with us, it has to give people the opportunity to migrate away from the Facebook server into the Fediverse, because if they don't ex include that in their technology, then they ex are excluding us. We are making our offerings. Everyone can move over to Facebook, but no movement is po possible in the other way. So that is a must. If someone would not participate on that level, we won't let we won't cooperate. I think that should be clear. What is not so clear is the question about the size of an instance. Uh, the discussion is quite frequent. How large it can an instance allowed to get be allowed to get? And uh, at the Fed camp, at least there was consensus that instances cannot become too large because they, then there are problems and. A democratic democratic system, particularly if we want to have something like a council and make decisions, then that won't be possible if it's very big and large instances also tend to dominate the whole network, the cooperation between the various instances. But you could debate a lot how large large actually means. You could say we are setting a hard limit, but <clears throat> we are going to be very tolerant in the sense that it will be a large limit, a high limit. And of course, anyone such as Facebook could circumvent this by offering several instances. So not everything is solved. There are some question marks remaining, but since we do have to, you know, the fact that we do have to talk about instant size seems obvious to me. All those that are coming together and that say we want to have this charter and then form this kind of council should in should affirm to each other that they will always use the lowest tool possible say not take the strongest hammer and defederate which is block another instance completely 
that actually should not happen at all if possible but it might sometimes be necessary we found in the end but a lot of things you can actually reach by limiting and at least confirming to each other that we are always going to use the mildest means available and we're not going to be overreaching uh, and um, kind of determine someone else's self-governance and actually tolerate a, diversion, a, a diversity of opinions uh, because we have certain needs to cater for. And there are the three dots at the bottom. Uh, that list is not complete, it's not closed yet. Of course, you have to be mindful not to include too much, but again, it has to be, it should, it's supposed to be the lowest common denominator. And then if Facebook comes, they can either play along or not play, play with us at all. And in order to reach that goal, to be enough for it to hurt Facebook if they cannot play with us, for that it has to be general enough and without any kind of individual flavors in order to include people from the German Liberal Party, FDP, even them, and even the conservatives from the CSU uh, in Bavaria. Um, so in order to make them join us, and they, that's what we want, we want, it to make it, we want to make it possible for them to, to join us. And we want them to want to join us. Because we have a diversity, and it's good if we come together and not just be polarized. and. That is because then we can reach each other, we can explain things to each other, why this climate change thing is going completely the wrong way, why fascism is increasing. If we always split up into bubbles that are separate, then we will only reach, we are preaching to the choir, as the saying goes. We are talking to those people that have understood it anyway. And at that moment, well, no, at the moment when we say we are going to make our rules as general as possible, then we will able to be able to reach those that don't always agree with us. And I think that is a good idea. Then we have the reality check. Uh, we did want to make it the compatibility to the, well, there's a German saying, the most stupid possible user. That is what the DAU stands for in German. Uh, it's a term I don't like, but that's what it stands for. We wanted to have it compatible to those people because many people just want to chat and not govern on the Fediverse because that is what they know. And now you come with your um, uh, kind of traditions and, and um, customs and people will be unnerved. Um, that is a fact. There is a diversity here. And if we want to start f forming this kind of central council, we have to talk about the concrete implementation of it. So how do we d make decisions? How do we dis distribute power? Uh, we've already understood that one large instance, instance cannot be allowed to decide everything. But uh, it will also be impossible to, to give every instance their own full vote, perhaps, I don't know. So how are rules enforced is another question. Is there going to be an arbitration court? So there is a whole lot of open questions still. And one of these is, is this going to be binding? Um, are these rules going to be binding to everyone? Or is it just a kind of seal of quality uh, saying that those that are joining this game have committed themselves to these goals, but it's not going to be st uh, checked strictly. All right, and then maybe we'll say, let's start, but how? How do we start making decisions? Well, start building small and great server communities, give yourself rules about moderation, define those, copy them from someone else, find each other. If we say that we've copied 80%, okay. Uh, always consider the next levels there. You don't have to start with the highest level of all. And leave those large instances. Choose your instances carefully because you have made a decision. You've kind of voted for something by that choice. And then there's this nice sentence, act local, think global. So get active on your own instances, but always think of the big picture, the large central council and consider how they would like it. How would it work at that high level? And if you want to join that conversation and that thinking, there is a page where you can leave your thoughts and read those that others have left. 
And the URL is kosazu.de, kosazu, K-O-S-A-Z-U dot D-E, slash 420, slash 43. It's sadly just in German, but you can leave your thoughts there. And now to the operators. Uh, ensure transparency. You're even allowed to say we have no democracy, we'll decide everything centrally, but make that open so that people know. And consider how you make those decisions. Are you going to be making them top down? Are you going to have polls and stick, stick to the results? Do you have some kind of, say, liquid democracy so that people can actually take part in those decisions? Think about this and implement it and network each other and regarding server communities. There's a Fediverse moderation meeting. There's much more. Those were those we have discussed on the FediCamp. Let's start, get started. Get started. I'm not the one who can introduce it. I'm not the one who wants to introduce it. People who wanted to introduce a value system have become the target of attacks. We have to do that together, and that's the end. Let's go one slide back to see, show the link. Thanks for listening. Ja, dann danke Lena für den Vortrag. Und es gibt bestimmt Fragen zu diesem Vortrag. Ja, da gehen direkt ein paar Hände hoch. Einen Moment, bis ihr das Mikro habt, damit die Leute im Stream das auch mitbekommen. Äh so, we'll have the Q&A now. Let's uh, have questions from the audience. And I know you had a question too. Okay, you said that instant size is an issue. And funnily, you said maybe there should be an upper limit. How about a lower limit? Because there might be instances that are just literally have just literally one user. And yeah, actually, I know a few. And uh, how are they supposed to take part in such a council system? I think it's a good and important question. I cannot answer it. For me, it's only important that you good maybe they should get together and form a council of several very small instances but how to do it and how to weigh those kind of votes is a very interesting open question that is the kind of EU level of problematic that we have to consider so yeah that's what we're dealing with uh, the Malta question yeah there was another question at 11 this morning, we had a workshop uh, about the uh, fragmentation of the Fediverse, and there was an issue there, a question. We have a global ambition, of course, but laws are always local, and that's a difficult problem, isn't it? Uh, so you put the finger at a point where I try to avoid, but we have to follow the laws. But also there, there needs to be a way to deal with it. That is a problem that we also have in other places and that we have barely solved so far. But I see a circle in the history because first at the point where we get to talk together about that is where we start to develop solutions. I don't think we have found the solutions yet because some some up there were not interested in finding the answers. But now we have the opportunity here to f search for a solution together. But I don't have an answer yet. Another question? Regarding blocking instances, defederating, as the term goes, you, were talk, you talked about limiting as an alternative. What does that mean? How can you limit another instance? This is very interesting. Limiting is a function. Muting. Muting. It's a function that we don't really know. It's close to the federation, the content on the timeline are not shown, it's like an opt-in. When I say 
there's is a user on the Trump instance, on some instance, that I blocked from my timeline, but I still want to follow that user, and I know, know his name and his address, then I'm not prevented from doing so without the consequence. My follower seeing content that's related to that server, that is muted. But the users have to opt in. I want to have individual content that I subscribe to. That was easy. Do you want? About limiting. So, if if someone's boot something, if you boost something, you see it yourself, but the followers won't see it. What happens when I boost? With the limiting, does someone know that? Well, limiting does mean muting. So, on my local timeline and my federated, defederated timeline, I, I, I don't see that. But other users that have a contact on that instance, they do see, uh, see, see it. And if they boost something from that instance, then their followers see that. But uh, lim uh, that defederating does something very bad because it dissolves all connections between uh, the following following connections all local copies of, of the content are deleted from the local instance and from then on any connection is prevented and uh, we and if you activate a certain setting there is no way to actually contact that other instance or have that contact us and with limiting, it's different. You can find other users if you search for them, for example. So there's the important difference. Thank you. Also, I say it again. Well, I'll say it again. Prison is possible, but no death sentences. Well, comparisons. Das noch eine Frage. You were saying when you talked about the charter, that you want to be as, as independent as possible of flavors, individual opinions. but And now uh, you said something that I support 100%, but you included anti-fascism, which is a kind of personal value. So if you include that in the general charter, uh, you would probably use truth social. Not if a problem is that. It's incompatible for being fascist. Yeah, well, I'm, I have this. Oh, I'm against climate change too, but but in this community, I, I believe everyone agrees with me. But there are others that uh, do other things, and that will quite easily get us to a place where the conservatives from the CSU and CDU perhaps would be excluded, the German conservative parties, and. Uh, the basic thought, I think, but and perhaps reduce it to the technical protocols seems sensible, and the values, I think, shouldn't be at the highest level. The highest council say it's a protocol, but charter should not be the most highest le level, but the one below, but as valuable as possible, but not any less valuable. As independent of values as possible, but no less. Another question. Historically, power has corrupted always, whether it's in the Soviet Union, anywhere, uh, which is why I would ask, do we still do it this way and have a central committee at the top? It's the other way around. It's not like that in the Democrats. That say it's not. The Democrat is this a sim that we know that with corruption, and uh, can handle most of or that structure would be most able to deal with these problems and and power would always ag ag aggregate and we want the system to distribute power to as many shoulders as possible and of course no it's n never safe from these problems that will happen just as in politics and that is the best answer I have. Eine Frage? 
We have time for one more question. Vortrags hast du gesagt, es gibt Leute, die solche Rätesysteme und die sind, denen ist dann was zugestoßen, oder wie, wie war der Kommentar? Ach ja, wie hieß was, der Mann? Worauf? Ich habe vergessen. So something happened to someone in a council system, but I, I forget who that was. Would anyone perhaps be able to help out? There was this kind uh, assassination in 1919, Eisner. Eisner. He actually died for the attempt to form such a system in Bavaria, Kurt Eisner. Right. I have one concluding or what do you want to no you go ahead because i have written a book which was published in may and i would like to show it to you and hold it into the camera in this book i have talked about the fediverse a little maybe things that people will now have uh, grasped already uh, this is called digital Maturity, digital autonomy, take responsibility. The word Mündigkeit is not easy to translate. Something between maturity, independence, autonomy. Uh, you can buy this book at the Digital Courage uh, booth, and I would be happy to sign it for you too. Okay, another applause for Lena. And if you want to have a preview of the book, Lena, we're going to have a reading, give a reading from that book tomorrow. Okay. So keep being, keep hydrating. And the next talk is public money at work in 15 minutes. We will be interpreting that, interpreting that too. And we were Sibalis and Sebastian. And uh, yeah, I hope.